Hello, hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between heating CFM versus cooling CFM. All right, all right, let's get into it. So what we're going to do is calculate the cooling CFM. So what we call this is actually the target CFM. And when we choose the CFM from the manufacturer, then we're going to call it design CFM. And why this is so important? So let's start uh, doing this. So what we're going to have in here is actually the following. Let's do this in here. So design CFM, let's put this design CFM. It's going to come from the manufacturer. 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 Manufacturers. Blower data blower data and so if you want to obtain the data from the manufacturer uh, you need the model number of your furnace after doing a manual j manual s you can go to the next step so we are prepping for manual d which is duct design so manufacturers blower data you're going to have two you're going to have a uh, heating heating data and you're going to have cooling data all right heating data and cooling data Okay, so how do you know how to get or have a baseline or guideline on what the CFM would be? So that's what we call target CFM. So the target CFM, target CFM is what you are trying to accomplish. So the target CFM are going to be basically based on sensible heat equation, sensible heat equation, sensible heat equation or formula. All right, so the target CFM is sensible heat equation to find out what the CFM would be for a proper heat load, okay? So now we're gonna do, we're gonna check on the differences. Let's see, for example, we, we're gonna do in here the cooling CFM, target cooling CFM, okay? So the target cooling, the target cooling CFM is going to be equal for this exercise. After performing a heat load, what we have is the cooling equipment is going to give me, based on a heat load, sensible. So we uh, let's put this in pink so everyone can see it. So we have sensible. Oh, so we have sensible. Hold on. This is very interesting. So sensible and cooling. And let's add this. There you go. Sensible, latent, and total. So for the sensible, we have this heat load. All right. So in other words, my cooling CFM is going to be the following. Q equals 1.08 CFM times delta T. So what is my sensible heat? My sensible heat is going to be 21,809 BTUs per hour. That's 1.08 times CFM. But which CFM? This is cooling CFM. And the temperature, delta T, is going to be equal to the following. The te delta T is going to be outdoor design temperature based on ASHRAE recommendations and indoor design temperature. There we go. So outdoor, indoor. So that would be the following in here. That's going to be 94, 94 degrees minus 75 degrees. And this is commonly known as temperature drop. Temperature drop. And if you do the math, this temperature drop is 19 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually we're looking at 20 degrees Fahrenheit or of 15 depending on the manufacturer depending on the conditions all right but this te this is temperature drop a very important factor to measure when we want proper performance of our equipment all right so after we do this we found found out that the cfm actually the target cfm is 1240 okay so we need 1240 cfm for cooling all right this is for cooling. So what about for heating? For heating, we're going to put in here heating, heating CFM. Okay. So we're going to do the same procedure. But from the previous video, Q equals 1.08 times CFM. This is my sensible heat equations times delta T. So from the previous video, we had that 
uh, the heat load for the same house that we're doing 34.94.9 equals to 1.08 times CFM equals to the temperature rise so the temperature rise was 14 minus 72 okay or vice versa so we're gonna put this as the following we're gonna edit this and put this as 72 which is the same it's it's just that it's a difference okay so the CFM that we had before for heating purposes was 558 okay so this is the heating CFM requirement okay so as you can see which the one that is completely higher is the cooling CFM so after so in so the first step for a duct design is to make sure that there is enough CFM for all the registers and supplies so that's why we take into account for duct design the cooling CFM so this is a start so if the system is able to uh, to provide this amount of CFM or then of course it's going to be able to comply with this amount of CFM in heating mode all right but as we were mentioning in here this is mainly target CFMs because we're trying to accomplish that CFM okay so now we're gonna go and design this and we're gonna go to the manufacturer's data so what would be the design CFM for cooling so now we're gonna go here and do the cooling CFM here you go cooling CFM cooling CFM all right but this is the design CFM design okay so what we're trying to accomplish is the following we're trying to get uh, 1240 and we have in here we're gonna put this in pink this is the cooling let's put in here blower data this is the blower data or performance data or fan performance data so when we're going to the blower data it's married CFM is married with static pressure external static pressure ESP <clears throat> so if you tell me what the CFM is it always comes what's the static pressure on that on that side okay so I didn't put a crop I didn't put in here actually I crop this table the external static pressure so I'm just gonna put this with numbers so this is external, external static pressure is 0.1 this is 0.2 this is um, whatever it looks better this is 0 0.3 0.3 this is 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 this is 0.8 this is 0.9 and this is 1 inches of water column okay so based on that in the blower data we're gonna put this in pink still so what we need is 1240 so if we take into account at 0 0.7 inches of water column the maximum we can obtain there is 11 and 50 CFM so there might be issues there might be issues it's not safe so if we do it at 0.7 external static pressure we are going to have issues because we need 1240 CFM plus the installation is not 100% perfect so we need to consider to take that into account too plus at times the homeowner forgets to change the air filter which is going to increase the resistance therefore it's going to decrease my CFM so of course they're gonna have issues we need to consider all those aspects so in this case what we, we need to do is we need to find a way to lower the resistance which is uh, in this case it would be to 0.5 so if we take into 0.5 see 0.5 inches of static pressure then it complies what we need for with our target CFM so we're gonna put this 12 um, the design CFM in this case would be <clears throat> 1223 CFM at 0.5 inches of water column inches of water column 
or water gauge, whichever is the same. So at 0.5 inches of water gauge, but this is with the contingency of we have to make sure that the resistance is not is not that much. When we're talking about resistance, we're talking about this. Um, I'm gonna put this uh, in a better way. Let's put this in white. How about that? So when we have an air handler or a furnace, okay, this is my furnace or air handler. Let's put AHU air handler unit, which could be a furnace, gas furnace, or electrical. So in an air handler unit, we're gonna have the following. We're gonna have the return return air okay we're going to have air handler unit let's put in here air handler unit let's put in here a coil we have the coil okay and we have in here a supply air register we could have in here a balancing damper balancing damper okay and we're gonna have in here a filter okay so each time, each time that you, each time that this is, uh, in here we have the fan, fan, okay? So, for example, let's imagine, let's imagine that we have these values for this calculation. So the return air register is going to give me a pressure loss of, let's say, usually 0 0.03 inches of water column. Supply air, 0 0.03 of water column. Uh, the filter is going to be, the maximum could be 0 0.15. 0 .15. Sometimes it's 0 0.10. That's a lower filter. M-E-R-V, -E MERV filter, okay? So the more, the more the MERV, the higher the pressure loss. So in other words, you might not be able to upgrade this to a higher MERV filter because the higher the MERV filter, which is a rating for the filter, how uh, efficient the filter is, how much uh, resistance, pressure loss, the higher is going to be the higher pressure loss. So in this case, the, the, that would be the factor that we need to consider. Balancing damper, 0 0.03, and the coil, that depends on tables too. So mm, let's put in here 0 0.17, but that's based on the manufacturer, all right? So if we add all this up, we're gonna have a resistance. Let's put a resistance, resistance of, or pressure loss equal to, uh, this is 0 0.41 inches of water, see, inches of water column, inches of water gauge or column. All right, so since we are 0.41 and we select this speed for 0.5, then we're going to be able to have this proper CFM. So we are in the safe zone, okay? We are still have. So as you can see, the higher the resistance, because this external excited pressure represents the resistance, the less effective or the less CFM we have. For example, if the resistance is 1.1 water gauge, then look at my highest CFM is 971. So the higher the resistance, the lower the CFM. If you have no resistance, see the resistance is 0 0.1 external static pressure, then I have a higher CFM, of course, because there's less resistance, right? So 0.5 is a good rule. It's a, it's a good number. Uh, we can always go to 0.7 to consider more losses. But now my design CFM is 12. 27. So when the when the installer contractor goes to the field, they could always make sure that okay, how do obtain do I obtain this 12 27 23? So I'm gonna put my dip switches in off, off and on. And in fact, since this is since this has a start, usually the manufacturer leaves this as a default setting. Default setting means like a higher speed. And then if there are more issues, or they could always play with the dip switches to adjust the CFM. This is a, a different kind of air handler or fan or different. Okay, so now what about the heating CFM? So the heating CFM, that's gonna be the last part, heating. Okay, heating CFM, and we're talking about design. Okay, design CFM. That's going to be equal to the following. So the manufacturer, as I, again, is 
can provide a blower data for heating and cooling. This is the blower data for cooling. Cooling. And this is a blower data for heating. For heating. And it's better to pronounce this as heating, not heat. Because heat is more generic. When you're doing a heat load calculation, we're talking about in general, cooling and heating. So that's why to differentiate, we call we say cooling load, heating load. And cooling and heating load loads are heat load. All right. So this is coming from the manufacturer, and we're saying this is going to be um at 0.5. External static pressure. So in this case, my design CFM would be the closest to the target, five five eight. So this would be seven sixty two. There we go. And then I'm gonna put in here that my design CFM is seven sixty two CFM at uh, 0.5 inches of water co column or water gauge. All right, so this is the first step to do to perform that de duct design because after we have the complete CFM, then we can always do the distribution of this CFM to different ducts. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and you, if you did, hit the like, subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe. Also, one last saying is keep on learning. It's always good to learn. There is so much to learn and it's very motivating in every aspect, okay? Okay, thanks so much.